Well, I think the really interesting question that has not been answered ever satisfactorily, and not even asked the question, is there's a hypothesis or a proposition that the bureaucracy is against reforms. The bureaucracy is lethargic, the bureaucracy is inertia prone, it resists change. How is it that this bureaucracy actually introduced the reforms? We perpetually debate about reforms not having happened, however the reforms are defined. What combination of circumstances led to reforms being driven between 1991 and 1993. All reforms subsequent to 93 were almost incremental. I am just focusing on that particular period, 91 to 93. Reforms are not done only by the Prime Minister. Reforms are not done only by the Finance Minister. There was a peculiar constellation of forces, configuration of forces, in Finance Ministry and North Bloc between 91 and 93, which led to all of this happening. Perhaps coincidence, perhaps deliberately chosen. This is something that I find relatively ignored. People mention Narasimha Rao, people mention Manmohan Singh, but there are these other people who, if they wanted, would have stopped whatever these two gentlemen were trying to do. Reforms are not only about the reform. Reforms are also about selling the reforms, marketing the reforms. That particular point, coincidence, we had a very good marketing oblique packaging team which would convincingly appear on television channels and sell the reforms. So that's another related point that people often tend to forget. My growing up years were in the 60s. Most people now no longer remember was in the 60s, mid 60s, we went through droughts. There was food scarcity. And this was much before the Green Revolution even took hold. So, in those days, you had all kinds of restrictions on food. There were limitations on the number of guests you could invite. Those were the days of so called black marketing, etc. Even much later, when I moved to Delhi as a student, it was not very easy to get milk. Milk was in short supply, so the countless number of things that were in short supply. When I went abroad as a student, uh, the normal allowance was uh, three pounds or three dollars, I forget which, one of the two, which was simply not sufficient, so you had to go to the Reserve Bank of India in Parliament Street and get a special permission. And I remember my father was delighted when he came back with a permission for not three dollars but something like thirty-five dollars. So in every particular area it was a shortage economy. Recently, we had several landline connections at home. So then I told my wife that why am I not surrendering this, these landline connections because that decision was not mine, it was not really hers. She said, I don't know, we never use them, so why don't you surrender them? And I could never bring myself to surrender them. And then I realized what was happening at the level of the subconscious, that a telephone connection was so very rare, you did not surrender it. So I had to sort of force myself, let's get rid of these connections, we don't want them. Today, you are wherever you are, let's say you are in, I don't know, you are in um, Chennai. You know, I just pick up my phone and that's it. We were talking about an era when it was just landlines. Landlines which normally did not have STD connections. Normally, the STD revolution is essentially post mid 80s. No STDs. You had this concept of trunk calls. Trunk calls means you tell the telephone operator, the telephone operator collects you instantly. And there was a whole category. The most expensive one was something called lightning. Lightning meant you ring immediately and instantly disconnected. Otherwise, you book a trunk call, that trunk call could come through any time in the next trunk hours. So if you booked a trunk call, you sit at home and wait for the trunk call to come. You can't afford to miss a trunk call, so you booked a trunk call in the night. 
So reverse call is essentially meant I'm calling you, but the charges are paid by the caller. Because the charges are considerable. 